Hi, I'm Em from 21 Readers. Today I'm talking about the best book of the month books of 2022 so far. Midway through the year, I thought would be a great check-in point to check in on how we're feeling about book of the month selections so far this year. For each month, we'll go through month by month, January through June. I'll say what I read that month for book of the month and what I rated it. But also for each of the months, I'll tell you what other books that I've read that were picks, what books I plan to read. Then at the end of the video, we're gonna go into award speculation where I talk about what I think could be a contender for book of the year. So we'll start Start with January. The January picks were Black Cake, Love and Other Disasters, Reckless Girls, Fiona and Jane, and The Magnolia Palace. I read Love and Other Disasters in January and rated it four stars. It was really fun. I remember reading it within 24 hours and I remember it was snowing so I was basically snowed in reading this fun book and I remember the cooking setting was fun and I really enjoyed the representation and the characterization of the two characters. It wasn't a five star for me because it felt rushed and insta-love. This has still been one of my favorite adult romances I've read this year despite it not being a five star. As for other books in January, I also have read Reckless Girls and I gave it three stars. I enjoyed The Wife Upstairs, Rachel Hawkins' other thriller more than Reckless Girls. However, Reckless Girls I remember was very short I think only an eight hour audiobook if I remember so I remember getting through that one in one day and it was fun definitely more of a summer book but reading it in January is fine too so we have my rating for the book I read we have other books I've read next is what books do I still plan on reading I still want to read Black Cake because I've been hearing great things from other people for other people's mid-year freakout tags I've seen Black Cake pop up but I definitely will prioritize this by the end of the year. I also plan on reading Fiona and Jane. Okay, so January, I read Love and Ever Disasters and gave it four stars. I also listened to Reckless Girls on audio through Libby and gave it three stars. And I still plan to prioritize Black Cake and Fiona and Jane. I plan to read those by the end of the year. I also wanted to quickly mention that I had an add-on in January, a free add-on, and I read The Maid and gave it four stars. This featured one of my favorite characters that I've read this year so far, and so if I was ranking it among my other main picks, this definitely would have been my top above Love and Other Disasters, but since it was an add-on, I'm not counting it as part of my ratings, but I did really enjoy this one. All right, moving on to February. February's picks were Don't Cry For Me, A River Enchanted, The Golden Couple, Vladimir, and Peach Blossom Spring. I read Vladimir for February. I rated it two stars. What I remember most about this one is how unique the main character's point of view and voice was. Since it's following a 50 year old woman in academia, she's very sarcastic and biting. And so reading from her voice was definitely a unique reading experience. It was thought provoking. Some of the things frustrated me about where the story went, which is why it ended up being a two star for me. But the fact that this author took risks and made it a unique reading experience makes you want to pick up more things from her in the future since this was a debut. Rating wise, we have Love and Over Disasters first, Vladimir second. As for other books in this month, I have not read any other books this month. However, I still plan to read Don't Cry For Me before the end of the year. This one's an LGBT literary fiction. Although this one doesn't have very many ratings on Goodreads compared to the other February books, I've still heard great things from the people who did pick this one. All right, next we have March. Oh yes, March has only had seven picks. Okay, so we have The Book of Cold Cases, The Cartographers, The Verifiers, The Unsinkable Greta James, Dating Dr. Dill, The Paris Apartment, and Tell Me Everything. The Book of Cold Cases was my pick and I gave it three stars. This one started out strong with a really creepy atmosphere and a really intriguing main point of view. However, the big reveal happened at the 50% mark and so the second half of the book was very lackluster and it very much lost steam. However, Reading Miss did inspire me to pick up her other works, which were I'm drawing a blank what they're called. Draws blank, draws blank, draws blank. The Book of Cold Cases, nope. The Sundown Motel and The Broken Girls, yeah. And this one was my least favorite of the three. Since we have a four star and a two star, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this one in the middle. Here's my rating so far. We have four star, three star, two star. As for the other books in March, I have read The Paris Apartment and I gave that one five stars. So if I would have picked it physically, that would have been a five star book of the month, but I'm not counting it as a five star book of the month since it wasn't my pick. But yes, The Paris Apartment was a five star for me. And the main thing I remember about The Paris Apartment is the character dynamics because it reminded me of the character dynamics from HBO's show Succession, which is one of my favorite written shows. I hope it gets nominated for lots of Emmys this summer. And that's the only other March pick that I read. At this point, I don't plan on prioritizing any other of these March book of the month picks to read by the end of the year. All right, so there we have it, March. The Book of Cold Cases was a three star and The Paris Department was a five star. All right, moving on to April. 
April, we were back to five picks. The picks were The Good Left Undone, Kaikei, Bittersweet, Like a Sister, and True Biz. I picked True Biz and I gave it three stars. I remember feeling very engrossed into the characters' situations since the three main characters that we're following in this one have different circumstances regarding their deafness, regarding the relationship with deaf culture and deaf community. So my favorite thing about this one was definitely the exploration of the deaf community and of deaf culture. And I really enjoyed seeing that on page. However, I was definitely more interested in the characters and the deaf culture elements as opposed to the actual plot of what was going on. However, I was absolutely thrilled that this was also a Reese's book club pick that month so this gave this book and this author into the hands of even more readers so this is a three star and so I'm gonna go ahead and rate it above the book of cold cases since I did enjoy the book and I really enjoyed learning about the deaf culture it was just a lot of the plot that I wasn't as interested in especially towards the end there whereas this book the ending actively annoyed me so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and give this three star above this one. As for the other April picks, I haven't read any of the other April picks and there aren't any that I am prioritizing before the end of the year. All right, moving on to May. May had six picks. The picks were Breathless, Yerba Buena, The Hacienda, Take My Hand, Part of Your World, and Darling Girl. Breathless was my pick for May and I gave this one three stars. This one follows our main character who is a mountain climber. It's not just her going up this mountain, there's a lot of other people on her team and a lot of other characters. The main thing I remember about this one is learning about why all the different characters wanted to climb this mountain. They all had different reasons for being there. They all had different motivations. The filler elements here were just okay and it felt like we were building to something and there wasn't a ton of payoff. However, I did feel very invested in the character building and the reasons as to why all these characters were on the mountain. So I enjoyed the characterization, but the filler elements didn't really hit, which is why it was only a three for me. Am I gonna put Breathless above or below True Biz? Hmm, I really liked the deaf culture exploration in True Biz, but I really liked the characters in this one. But both books let me down plot-wise. Okay, I'm gonna have True Biz above Breathless because this one did feel like the payoff wasn't there. I could say the same thing about True Biz, but because of the exploration of deaf culture, I'm gonna go ahead and put True Biz above Breathless. So those are the rankings so far. As for the other books in May, I have also read Yerba Buena. I finished it last week and I gave it four stars. It's an LGBT literary fiction. We're following two women over the course of about 10 years or more over their life. And I felt very engrossed by this writing style and by how these two women's lives interconnected. The fact that I've been thinking about these characters a lot since finishing Yerba Buena makes me think I could potentially bump it up to a five. I would definitely recommend Yerba Buena for the beautiful writing, for the beautiful character study and how I felt like I knew these characters for a long time having only spent eight hours with them on this audiobook but I felt like I knew them for longer which is a testament to the writing and the characterization and as for other books for May I still plan to read The Hacienda that's another one I had on Libby but let it expire but I do plan to prioritize reading it before the end of 2022 all right now on to June June we also had six. The picks were The Stardust Thief, Things We Do in the Dark, The Lifestyle, Woman of Light, The Wedding Dress Sewing Circle, and The Lies I Tell. The Lies I Tell was my pick. I rated this one three stars. Lots of three stars. I rated this one three stars. I just finished it yesterday. This one I remember most feeling very invested in which of these women was gonna out manipulate the other one. This one definitely felt like a very vanilla thriller. There wasn't a lot of high action scenes on page. It was more just a lot of emotional manipulation of like them trying to figure out what's going through the other person's head. Mind games. I like that it was short. I could definitely see this being like a thriller for beginners. And I definitely still plan to check out this author's other thriller of a last flight from two years ago. But this one was definitely very average. As for rating it with my other picks, I'm going to go ahead and put it under Breathless and above the Book of Cold Cases. So this is my final rating. We have the four star at the top, and then these four are all three stars, and then this bottom one's a two. So to recap, my rankings for my picks so far this year are Love and Ever Disasters, True Biz, Breathless, The Lies I Tell, The Book of Cold Cases, and Vladimir. And we haven't had a five star yet for my book of the month. And as for other books for June. I haven't read any other ones but I do plan to read Woman of Light and prioritize that one by the end of 2022. It sounds like a very beautiful story and I have it on hold from Libby right now so here we go committing to not letting it expire. So to recap these are my rankings of my six book of the month books so far this year. These are the other book of the month books that I listened to on audio this year. And these are the five books that I plan to read before the end of the year. All right, now moving into the award speculation for book of the year contenders. 
I'm very into award shows and I get very invested into predicting them and seeing who wins. Hence why my wrap ups are all award show based because award shows are very much my thing besides reading. The way book of the year works is that in September they will email you a list of 20 of their picks from this year and you get to vote on which ones were your favorite. And then in November they'll announce the final five finalists. So in order to speculate I went ahead and pooled the number of ratings on Goodreads from all of the picks so far this year. And so I figured I would do a rundown of who I think will be in the finals. So I'll go ahead and do this month by month again. So starting in January, here are the ratings for January. So immediately Reckless Girls and Black Cake have the most ratings. So I'm gonna guess those two will be finalists. In this context, finalist is gonna be that email of 20, not the five. I could also see the Magnolia Palace being in there too, if they were to pick three from that month. Moving on to February, here are the ratings for February. The Golden Couple has the most here, so I definitely could see the Golden Couple getting in, and the other ones I don't think will get in. All right, moving on to March. Here are the ratings for March, and look at the Paris Apartment. At over 100,000 ratings, that one is definitely getting in. And as for the other ones, the Book of Cold Cases will get in at over 40,000. And then these other, I, I could also see... Um, Dating Dr. Dill and the Cartographers, since that one has nearly 20,000, I could see both of those getting in. So are they going to pick four books from March? I think that they will. I think that they very much could pick four from March. The Paris Department, The Book of Cold Cases, The Cartographers, and Dating Dr. Dill. All right, now we're getting into April. Here are the ratings for April, and Trubus definitely has the most. So I think Trubas will get in. I don't think any of the other ones from April will get in. Okay, now getting into May, this one gets a little bit more tricky to predict because there's definitely going to be less ratings from May versus the January picks since the books have not been out as long. So it's definitely harder to predict which books they'll pull from May since these books are all newer. However, my eye is definitely drawn to the fact that Heart of Your World has the most at 24,000 and Darling Girl is next at 8,000. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and predict those two from May, Part of Your World and Darling Girl. However, I'm noticing that Take My Hand and the Hacienda, which are third and fourth, like I could see them going for them as well, kind of depending on how the ratings continue to climb throughout the summer. So I wouldn't rule out Take My Hand and the Hacienda. I think it really has to do with how the ratings of their summer picks do to see if there's going to be room for Take My Hand and the Hacienda. But I do think Darling Girl and Part of Your World will get in. All right, moving on to June. This one's still going to be hard since these just came out. So far, The Wise I Tell has the most ratings of June with Things We Do in the Dark second place, The Stardust Thief third place. So similar to May, it's harder to predict. I'm gonna go ahead and just commit to the lies I tell getting in just because it has the most as of now, but definitely not gonna roll out with Stardust Thief and Things We Do in the Dark yet because let's see how those summer ratings bump it up. Okay, how many did I just predict? 12. I just predicted 12 contenders for sure. And then the ones from May and June that I said were like maybes, that was four. Maybe. So basically minimum, I think we have 12 contenders and then maximum, I think we have 16 contenders. So since we're going to get this email in September, we still have three more months to go, July, August, and September. So if we're going to go with the 12 contenders, that means we have room for eight more books over the next three months. So I think based on the success of the July, August, and September picks, that will dictate how many of those on the cusp picks might get in, those ones might not. I like talking about the on the cusp ones because those are the ones that are more interesting to speculate on. Like, ooh, what's gonna get in, what's not? Anyway, tell me in the comments what your favorite book of the month books have been so far this year, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.